Hello everyone, I'm Landon Schlungen. Now it is time to do the drum machine. Here's the drum machine I came up with. It's very simple. When we press a, one of these buttons, it plays a sound. And if we type on our keyboard, it plays that sound. If we type in AS, ASD, it, types, it, it plays those noises, or those notes. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it passes all eight of the tests. And the code is right over here for it. So we have our our objects of what are these called audio clips um, that come from AWS, and I got those actually off of Free Code Camp wherever they get theirs. Um, it says we can use them, and then we play the audio, and we also have a room component which is the drum component. If we go into drum, it looks like this. Uh, pretty simple. We have the drum pad. Um, component that plays a sound and then it has this audio clip that we play and it has to be this audio clip and in order to pass the test all right so without further ado let me show you how i built this all right i have a new visual studio code open and i can open up uh, my fcc copy from folder and then this is where i'm going to actually create the project i'm going to be using Vt instead of cdn stuff so in order to create this, all we need is Node.js installed. That's very important. And then we can do npm uh, create at or vt at latest. And then it will ask me some questions. Uh, the project name is going to be the drum machine. And then we're going to be using React and TypeScript. Awesome. All right, so now let's open up this folder. I'll open the folder. We want copy from and drum machine. All right, so now this is just a blank project. Uh, I can do npm i in order to install my dependencies. This might take a while. And then I can do npm run dev, and it will run our beautiful boilerplate project. All right, that didn't take too long. npm run dev will run it for me. And here we go. And this is our starter project. So we can just count. Um, pretty simple. So now let's get started on this. If I go into source, we can see all of our folders. And first thing I want to do is get rid of all the boilerplate stuff. So let's get rid of all the ads. Um, let's go into index.css. Let's get rid of everything except for the background color and some of the font family stuff. Let's get rid of, get rid of all of this. I don't need it. And then also inside of uh, app.css, let's get rid of all this. All right, so now we just have a blank page, if we can see that right here. So now whatever changes we make here, it's going to be reflected on the other side. So if I say hello, uh, it shows up. Beautiful. All right, first thing we need to do is uh, get our, our bank. So the bank that I'm going to be using is an audio clip bank. And it's going to be of type audio clip. So I'm actually going to be creating a couple of different files, first of all. So over on the sidebar, there's this uh, file plus and folder plus. Uh, I'm going to be creating a couple of files. The first one is going to be types.ts so that we can add our audio clip type in here. And then we also want to create another folder. This folder is going to be called uh, drum.tsx. Uh, yeah, because it's going to be our drum pad, uh, just one of those little buttons. Inside of index, or, uh, inside of types.ts, I'm going to define an interface. This uh, interface is going to be our audio clip type. So we're going to go export interface. And we have to make sure to export it so that we can import it in our other uh, files. So audio clip, this interface is going to have a key trigger, key trigger which is a string, a URL, which is a string, and a description, which is a string description. All right, so now we can go into app.tsx and create our bank. And uh, I don't know if there's, there's not really an easy way to do this bank, is there? Unless you can like find where they do it. I think I let GitHub Copilot help me out with this one, but const, uh, Audio clips, audio clips, which is of type audio clip array, audio clip array, and I can auto import it. 
uh, by hitting enter. It's an array. And then inside this audio clip array, we're going to have objects, which is going to have a key trigger. The key trigger is going to be Q. We're going to have a URL, which is, yeah, beautiful. See, <laughs> it knows, the AI knows that I want the Freeco Gam Drum Heater one. It just knows because so many people have done this before me. It's already on the internet. <laughs> it just knows that this pattern is, this is what people want. Uh, heater one. And then I can create another object. This object is going to be key trigger W, URL, uh, heater two, description heater two. And I'm just going to go down the line and do it for all nine of these. Beautiful. So there's a nine, <laughs> nine in the bank. Just GitHub Copilot does everything. I could have just copied it over from my other project, but it's just fun watching GitHub Copilot work do its magic. All right. So now what do we want to return for Markdown? Uh, let's change this into a, we want it to be a div with a class name of container and an ID, hashtag ID of drum machine. And Emmett will pick that up and create the class name and ID for us. And then inside of this div, we're going to have an H1, which is going to be our title, FCC Drum Machine. If I save this, it should show up. There it is. And then I want to have a div, which is going to be dot whole drum, whole drum. All right, my whole drum is going to have a bunch of audio clips in it. So to do the audio clips, it's going to be yeah, we're going to map through our audio clips. So this is how we do this in React. We map through our clips. And then inside of our clips, we're going to have a, a drum. So we haven't made this component yet. Uh, we have to for this to work, obviously. Um, we, we have the TSX here, but we actually have to create it. So I have uh, some snippets installed for react and I can do react arrow function component export and then it will auto auto make that for me so I don't have to we don't have to import react anymore so that's why that's like that um, the drum let's just import it first into our app.tsx so control dot will uh, see what we can do on it which is auto import it epic and we're still getting an error here because I need another parenthesis and there we go. Now we get drum nine times. Perfect. That's exactly what I expected. All right. So we need to pass in uh, some information about the clip, mostly just the audio clip. So audio clip equals audio clip. And then I'm also going to have a key, which is the audio clip dot key trigger. Key trigger. Anything that you need that you map through has to have a key. Um, and this is read out red because I need to make sure in my drum I'm taking this in. So inside my drum, I have an interface interface of drum pad, drum, drum props, yeah. And then this drum props is going to have an audio clip, audio clip of audio clip audio clip and we get this from types remember so control dot auto import from dot slash types so yeah I, I made this types folder because i need audio clip interface in both this uh both this file and app.tsx so now instead of returning just this uh, we also have to take in our audio clip so audio clip is in here. And how do we know that this is the type we need? We can just make sure it's drum pad props. All right, so now we have to use this. So inside our return statement, we're going to do a button because it's a button that we click. And this button is going to have an audio inside of it. So audio, its source is going to be audio clip that URL. ID is audio clip key trigger and the class name is clip. Yeah, that's perfect. 
Uh, and then this actually underneath it, we have to have the audio clip dot key trigger. All right, save that. So now nothing shows up because audio is like hidden for some reason and button uh, isn't showing up at all. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but I have to give it a class name of drum pad and give it an ID of drum. So backticks drum dash audio clip, clip dot key trigger. That's for the tests, I believe. And then for on click, I have to do a play sound function. So play sound, and we're gonna pass in the audio clip, audio clip like so. So now up here, I'm going to, between the start of the function and the return statement, I'm going to create this function, cons play sound. The sound is going to be that clip. Actually, maybe not, no, let's not do that. Sometimes I reject what, uh, the AI does. Sometimes I really like it though. All right. So we actually want to do document dot get element by D uh, key clip dot key trigger dot play. Yes. And the reason why this is red right here is because we have to say that this is a HTML audio element, audio element. Um, and also we have to do a dot catch on here dot catch error. If I save this, oh, I have to make sure that this closes correctly. Dot catch console dot error. Save. All right, it's still red for some reason. We need a parenthesis around here and here. All right, there we go. All right, document dot element by D. Clip dot key trigger as audio element and then play. Um, it's still not showing up because I need a bunch of, also this should be going away. Oh, I can't find audio clip. That's why it's clip. That's why clip. Oh, there we go. There's our buttons and it's playing it. Yes, it is. It's playing sound. I actually can't hear it because of my recording software, <laughs> but I think you guys can hear it. So that's cool. All right, and also this is red for some reason. Unsafe of any value. Um, oh, that's why I'm using audio clips there. That's just gotta be clipped. All right, we actually don't need this use state at all, I don't believe. Yeah, we don't need that. We aren't using use state at all. Instead, we're gonna play the audio when we click on our keyboard. So this is probably the tricky part about this project is having an event listener for the keyboard. So in order to do this on the uh, opening, on the outermost div, I'm going to have an on key down event, on key down. And then this on key down is going to just play audio, which is going to be very similar to our drum play audio or drum play sound. So I can just copy this actually and go into app.tsx and just have this play audio here except i'm going to be play audio instead and then instead of this it's going to be a e which is a, an event and it's going to be react dot keyboard keyboard event of an html div element html div element so that's the type it is all right and then we're going to find our clip because we actually have to find what uh, key that they pressed. So it's, in order to find that, we're gonna do const clip equals audio clips that find when the key trigger equals E. So the event, the key dot to uppercase because all of these are uppercase, right? So if they type in a lowercase C, it will still match. And then we're going to say if no clip, if no clip return, so that it won't do anything if it's the wrong key. And then if it does find it, then we're going to play that uh, clip, which is this one right here, clip dot key trigger. All right, and then we're gonna also focus on the button uh, by doing a little bit of JavaScript magic here. We're gonna do a document dot get element by ID. 
by ID. And we're going to grab it by a drum dash and then plus the clip.key trigger and we're going to focus on it. We're not going to add an active class. Instead, we're going to just focus so that it will put its stuff around it. Um, you can put some a little border outline around it when you when you use the buttons so that you know what you played. And then we also want to display a, like a description of what you played. In order to do that, we have to actually add a div underneath here, which is div hashtag display. And then when we click on one or uh, tap on a button, we have to grab our display and set it as the clip.description. So now I open this, then it has the description right here. And I think we also have to add that to when we click on it. So inside of drum.tsx, we, we add that same line of code. So let's just copy that over. Let's copy this and paste it inside of this play sound function. And now when I click it also, that. Okay, so now we are ready to do the CSS. And it should actually pass pretty much all the tests right now. Actually, it should pass. Yeah, it should pass all the tests right now, even though it looks like crap. <laughs> um, so let's actually do that. Let's add the test to it. So in order to do that, we have to go into index.html. And the title, we can change to drum machine. And add in the script for the tests, which is like so. All right, it's a testable project FCC. It opens up right here. And I can change it to drum machine, run the tests, and all eight pass. So if we wanted to, I mean, you could keep it like this, but I would rather uh, make it look something like this, where <laughs> it's like actually cool looking buttons. In order to make those cool looking buttons, uh, I want to first go into index.css and make sure our margin and padding are set to zero. So I'm going to grab all with um, the star selector. We're going to go padding of zero and margin of zero. Perfect. And it looks worse for right now, but we will fix that. So now let's go into app.css and we're going to grab our container. Container. In our container, we're going to have a text line center. Now let's make this a little bigger too, because why not? We're going to have a margin of 50 pixels. All right, so now it's centered already. Perfect. Now we're going to grab our whole drum, whole drum. The whole drum is going to have a display of grid, not flex, display of grid. We're going to do a grid template columns, grid template columns. It's not going to be repeat. Actually, it is. I mean, you can do repeat 3 1 FR, or you can just type in 1 FR three times, which I guess I refer, which is why I did it that way. Gap of 20 pixels. So if I save that, there's our buttons now. We can do a grid template uh, rows as well, which would be 1FR three times. And then we can do a margin of 50 pixels auto, 50 pixels auto. And then we can add a width of min content. And there we go. So now our buttons are minimal size and then we can grab each drum pad with dot drum pad and the width is going to be 100 pixels so there are they at least 100 pixels wide uh, height of 100 pixels so now they're boxes we can get do a border on them which is two pixels solid of hashtag 2f 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 all right, save that. You can't really see that border, honestly, so I don't know why I have it. <laughs> Background color of hashtag 3F, 3F, 3F. Save that. And I did a semicolon instead of colon. So now it looks like so. We have a color of white to see the text. We have a font size of 20 pixels. See the text again. <laughs> All right. Border radius, border radius of eight pixels. We have a box shadow. 
of four pixels, four pixels, 10 pixels, and it's going to be an RGB e, RGBA of white. So I'm going to make this white and just 0.278 or so. Save that. Um, and it is yelling at me because of this 0.5 at the end for some reason. I'm going to put that there. All right, so there's a little bit of box shadow. All right, and then we're going to do a transition as well. So transition in order to um, 0 0.02, ease in, ease out. When it's active, that drum pad active. So in its active state, I want to translate it so it looks like we're clicking on it. So transform and translate. Um, it's going to go to the to right down four pixels. So if I click on this, you can see it move a little bit and it's kind of slow. But uh, that's based on the transition, which is 0.2 seconds. If I make that longer, it will take longer for it to drop down. And yeah, that's about it for the CSS. Yeah, so now we're done. Now we can host it on Notify. If you want to stick around for that journey, I'm going to be doing that right now. All right, first thing we want to do is go to GitHub and create a new repo, repository, new. We'll name it FCC uh, Drum Machine. Drum Machine. All right, public. I'll create this repo. All right, let's grab this remote origin. Copy that. Go back into our drum machine. Let's make this big. Control J, open up our terminal. Um, let's end this project. What we're going to do first to get init in order to initialize our repo. And then we're going to add a remote origin. And then we're going to do get add all. We're going to do add them to the staging. And we're going to do git commit dash m um, full project. All right. And then we're going to push it. So git push dash u origin main. All right. And then we should have that on GitHub now. As easy as that, I know I made it look so easy, but the first time doing it wasn't so easy, was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> At least for me, it wasn't. All right. So now it's on GitHub. Now we can go to Netlify. Open this up. Let's log in. All right. Let's go to add a new site, import an existing project from GitHub, authorize it. All right, let's look up FCC um, drum. Here it is, main branch and deploy. Nice and quick, nice and quick. All right, now it's deploying and it will be very quick. Oh, the building failed. Wow, that's a, that's a first. Oh, just because this use state. Just because of the use state. That's it. Okay, so so this is interesting. So it failed our build. So in order to redeploy this, I first need to fix it up. So let's fix this quick. So in order to fix it, I know what the problem is. Inside of app.tsx, um, it's yellow right here because we're not using this use state. So I need to get rid of that, save it, and then I can do get add all again, and it will add this file, and then commit it. So I have to fix this mistake. So uh, the commit message, here, let me clear this so you can see, git commit dash m. The commit message should be something related to this fix. So I'm gonna say fix imports like so, and then I'm going to git push again. And now I don't have to do that git push dash u origin main. I can just do git push and it will push it back to main. And then I think Netlify will pick that up right away. Yeah, and then now it'll rebuild. So that's the cool thing about Netlify. As soon as you push, it triggers another deploy and then it will make sure that everything is up to date. So here, now it actually worked and we can open up our production deploy. And here it is online. Um, and it still passes all the tests, at least I'm pretty sure. Awesome. In order to change this URL, we just go to Netlify. We can go into our site configuration and our domain management options, edit site name, 
going to edit this and call it uh, Drum Machine FCC Landon, something like that. Um, and now we can take that URL and let's try opening it right here. We can take this URL and plug it into Free Code Camp. So Drum Machine, throw it into the solution link, say we've completed it. And the next challenge is the JavaScript calculator. So make sure to watch my next video on that. And I will see you later. Uh, make sure to comment, subscribe, like all that jazz. And I'll see you next time. Peace out. Bye.